last session, the SKUPAC is definitely a lot more than a great viewer. You start with pixels and those are billions of numbers. You identify objects, this could be annotations or structures or regions or cells. And then you can query the object and ask questions about their size, shape, intensity, location, and so on. So just a quick reminder, there are two major kinds of objects that you're gonna be interacting in with QPAT. There are annotations, there are usually a few of them. Those could be your regions, your tissues, your areas. And they come um, free of charge with some basic measurements such as area and length. Detections on the other hand, um, they're, they're made by QPAT, there are many. They have many measurements by default, you cannot edit them. You can edit your annotations. Your annotations can be handmade. You can make full image annotation. They can be a result of a thresholder. That's what we've done in the previous section. And they can be also a result of a pixel classifier. That's an, an automation with some machine learning. Detections can be cells, tiles, and super pixels. We're gonna start by hand making a lot of annotations. But before we do that, let's open QPAT make a fresh project and add HE image, Swiss roll HE file to that new fresh open project. And while you're you're interacting with QPath, if you hover over a tool, it's gonna give you this um, this helpful toolkit. And there is also context help, that little question mark button. Go ahead and smash it and that's gonna open a new window. And if you move over a tool or a certain part of the interface, it's going to give you some context help. So M is a key that on your keyboard will enable the move tool, which you can also find here. And you can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. Those people who don't have mice, you can use your trackpad on the Mac. You're going to have to put two fingers and slide back and forth. I will also show you the input display. This little guy will tell us what I just clicked, what kind of shortcut I pressed. So I'm going to create a new project. Start by creating a new folder. I will drag it into QPAT, new project. I'm gonna add an image. Swiss roll H E. And I happen to know that this is an H E image, so I can already select it here. Double click to open it. And now let's go to view, show view tracker. So I can now hit the record button. And the tracker is actually going to record where am I? And what I would want you to do is I want you to find that image that is present on the PowerPoint slide right here. I want you to find that view. Oh, yes. And before we do that, if Ken can come up and tell us a little bit more about what we're actually looking at. Thank you, sir. Great reminder. And we're going to make a new recording for Ken. <laughs> Take it away, Ken. Hey, thank you. I'll try to be very quick here. So uh, a lot of you are familiar with uh, Swiss rolls. And Swiss rolls can really only be completed on uh, very small animals, you know, uh, mice, uh, rats, essentially where you uh, you roll the whole gut up, um, hopefully fixed. Uh, there's a lot of problems with Swiss rolls, but we'll save that for a different time. 
Um, you roll the whole gut up and then uh, it all fits into a tissue cassette. And what you get at the end is sort of a, a Swiss roll um, looking uh, shape and uh, you know different rolls of the gut. So this is just a snippet from a Swiss roll. And um, what's cool here is you don't see this a lot. See how the epithelium down here is very different than sort of the gut epithelium? So the reason that this is, is uh, they've actually taken the animal's gut all the way to the, to the uh, anus and rectum, and this is the rectum here. Um, so this is the uh, epithelium uh, that's on sort of the, the outside of the, of the mouse. Um, there are quite a few inflammatory cells all throughout here. And, uh, you know, I work at an immunology institute, so everybody says immune cells, pathologists say inflammatory cells. Uh, essentially the same thing, except inflammatory implies a, a pathologic process. Um, here, there's quite a bit of clear space uh, in sort of the, uh, the stroma or the interstitium, as people would say. Um, what that is, is that's edema. Um, Many people are familiar with edema, like when you see the appearance of a, a swollen foot or, you know, or some legs or something like that, when circulation isn't good. Um, edema means that there's extra fluid there and uh, it's not very proteinaceous, which is why it doesn't stain pink, um, you know, with, with eosin. And then, yeah, there is inflammation all throughout here. Uh, there's some inflammation in, in the, uh, the submucosa here, um, also in the lamina propria. Uh, forgive me if I'm sort of... Uh, glossing over that. That's probably the most important thing, but for me, it's kind of the obvious thing. So um, there's some sloughed epithelial cells here, uh, not too much of a concern. And then um, this is interesting. Um, does anybody know what this is? Yeah, this is, uh, this is fecal matter. So, uh, you know, the, 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 the chow contains uh, plant material, uh, which is composed, you know, partially composed of cellulose. And this is uh, undigested cellulose. So yeah, I think it. Okay, so um, while you have your um, tracker on, go ahead and try to find this area in the slide. Okay, zoom in and out, move. I give you one minute. Uh, zoom in. You you can use your your scroll uh, scroll wheel, and if you don't have a scroll wheel, if you're on a trackpad. Put your two fingers on the trackpad, slide up and down. Okay, how many of you found that spot? Oh, look at that. Awesome, 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 awesome. Okay, um, that's fantastic. So when I stopped recording, um, I can click on the more button. And first of all, you can play the movie. And then you can also enable data overlay. And that's going to show you um, how you've interacted with the slide. I was lazy. I, I didn't move much. Um, do you have any ideas why this would be useful? I don't know if I heard training, but I think I did her training. Anything else? If you are a pathologist and you want to prove to your boss that you've actually inspected every single part of that slide, <laughs> um, that would be one. And I think I had one more there, but I cannot read it from here. Um, but essentially, I find that this is an awesome way to train new people um, and um, yeah, document your analysis as well. Um, so the next question is, what would be the uh, representative area from that sample? How do you think? What, what do you think? Uh, how, how would you even try to find it? where the sample is so diverse, okay? Keep that in mind. And we're gonna go to the next part of this, which will be adding arrows. So that's new. Um, that's a new feature in uh, 0.5. On the top here, 
you can right click on the line tool and you can change it to an arrow. So in that area, and someone sneezed pretty badly. So I can even swear that was nice. Too. Um, in that area, I would like you to point to some red blood cells. They're pink, they don't have nucleus. Some protozoa that are hanging in that gut. Those are the small creatures with a little little thingy and then to the epithelium. If you want to give your annotation a name, you can do so after you've created the annotation. So that's a red blood cell right here. And I'm gonna delete my previous annotation by hitting the backspace. This is a red blood cell. If I want to name it, I'm gonna hit return and then I can say RBC. Now, if I if this doesn't show up, that's probably because your N names is switched off. So if I don't want my student to fuss around with this, I can right click annotations and log them. This is important. Now let's add those arrows. You can add description here. Are we good? No. You hit enter. So you need to have your annotation selected. And then you can hit enter and then you can set annotation properties. Or you can click right on it, annotations, set properties. Right click on, the, on this to get to lines and double arrows. So a couple of things that came up. N is to show and hide annotation names. This is to show and hide annotations. And if the annotation is selected, it will always show. Add a few hours to mucus secreting cells. Those are the mucus secreting cells. Okay. And select all of them. You can hold your control or command key and click on them and hit enter or right click and set properties and call them goblet cells. So you're a goblet cell and you're a goblet cell and you are also a goblet cell. So now only one of my annotations is selected, but I'm gonna select them by holding command key or control. I selected them all, I hit enter, I call them and I will log them just to make sure that no one messes around with these guys. They are important. They really help to protect you. There, if a tool is often used in QPAT, you will find that there are many, many, many ways to get it. You can select all, there's a button for that. There is also a keyboard shortcut. You can use the move tool and double click on annotation to select it, or you can then hold uh, um, control or alt to select multiple. There are many ways to, to get there. That's my point, right? It's, it's like a workshop, but this workshop is so amazing that you take a hammer and it's already, a, you know, it has a built-in drill and it has a, I don't know, a, a spray can attached to it. It's just amazing, right? And it's, it's made this way because someone was really annoyed at lack of certain annotation options and it was taking too much time to do something. Um, so um, there's a lot of built-in, um, uh, sometimes even undocumented tri tri tricks and tips on how to do it. Um, there is also this button that's called selection mode. 
where you can click on it and then you can mark the area that you want to have selected. And it's also important to know how you reset your selection. So if you click outside of the annotation, you're going to reset it. There is also a shortcut and there is a command in the menu. So go ahead, try to make a few annotations. They can be lines um, and just practice this, okay? This is going to be important. You're going to use it all the time. Make some annotations, select them. So, the question is how to interact with the selection tool. So we switch on the selection tool and now I can make a different annotation. For example, I'm gonna use brush to brush up all of the things they want to have selected and look how different this selection looks like, right? And then you select everything. It's very useful for cells, which are small and you would be you know, missing them. But beware that if you have it selected and you like try to select, make a new annotation, you're gonna get this, okay? so. Turn it off. Let's annotate some more. You would like now to duplicate an image from your project's view. If you don't remember how to do that, I will show you in a moment. Then you want to use the brush tool, shortcut is B, and write your initials. First go to high magnification, zoom in and write your initials and then zoom out and write your initials on a big piece of tissue. I'll show you how to do it in a moment. We go to projects, we right click and we duplicate an image. Actually, before that, I'm gonna save this one and I'm gonna duplicate. Um, do I also want to duplicate data files? If yes, all of those annotations will be transferred to new image. I'm going to do it for now. I'm opening up my new image and now my annotations are here. So I'm going to go to annotations, select all of them and delete them to start with a clean slate. But my first entry in the project contains all of my hard work. Okay. Now I'm going to take brush tool as B. And I'm going to zoom in, write my initials, zoom out, write my initials. Ah, I cannot write. There's speak. There, there's a bug. There is a bug. I, I cannot write outside the image. Do you think it's a bug or a feature? <laughs> yes, that's a feature. Okay. Now, if you have an annotation tool selected, depending on your preferences that you can set, um, um, that tool, I think by default, stays selected. Now, if I want to move around, I can temporarily press the space bar and then I can move. Otherwise, I will be annotating. I annotate, I press the space bar and I can move, okay? You annotate, press the space bar and you can move. You not hold the space bar anymore and you annotate again. How many of you have your initials on the screen? Ah, great. Okay, now it's time for some magic. Uh, we are going to be interacting with the software at low magnification and I'm gonna select all of my annotations and delete them. And I'm gonna press W or want, and I'm gonna annotate some epithelium. This is epithelium. That's epithelium. That is a muscle layer. That's a muscle layer. That's a muscle layer. Let's annotate some epithelium. One tool is a content a context aware tool. Um, it essentially recognizes similar pixels. Its functionality depends on the level of magnification. So if we zoom in, just like with the brush tool, we are annotating smaller features. If we zoom out, we annotate big features. 
If you made a mistake and you want to start over, press delete. Now, this annotation is red, um, which means that it's there, but it's not selected. And at this moment in time, I'm going to do something which I'm going to show you how to change the default color of the object, cyan. And now hopefully you're going to be see that, seeing that better. And I'm also going to change the thickness of the annotation line to something more substantial. Yes. And we can also go to view and fill annotations. And now we are seeing those annotations with some opacity inside. Okay. So how many of you have successfully used one tool? Okay, not enough. Uh, you go to a fresh area, you press the one tool, and you annotate, and depending on your zoom level, it's gonna annotate smaller features or larger features for things like muscle versus epithelium you want to zoom out okay so we have this annotation for the epithelium and i will double click on it and i will um set properties i'll give it a name and what's very important for the next step you want to have it locked Right click on it, annotations. You can see whether it's locked or not locked. It also shows you here that it is locked. You want to have it locked. When you have it locked, you can take another annotation tool, such as brush, and we can annotate some of those structures here. Those are called crypts. They contain stem cells, your gut regenerates from those structures. They are places where the goblet cells live. I marked a bunch of them, and I'm going to mark one that's kind of hanging a little bit outside. So now I have a bunch of annotations, and I could go in and rename every one of them. That will be helpful for the next step. It's few, few annotations. You're welcome. So when you're working with want, you often want to clean up your work a little bit. And uh, you can do it by holding Alt key or option, I guess, on, um, on a Mac to alt, alt or alt link. And if you have an annotation that's locked, well, it's locked. You cannot really do much, right? But I'm going to create fresh annotation right here. And if I press option on the Mac or alt on a PC, and I start from the inside, I will make a hole. If I start from the outside, I'm going to erode the annotation. I'm going to bite into it. So my, my way of interacting with want is often that I'm starting to make an annotation. And if I have some problems with it, I can go in, zoom a little bit, switch to brush tool, and clean up the edges. And you can absolutely do that with the one as well. Yes, yes. So 
with the wand, if you press Alt and you're inside, you can make those nice, nice, nice holes for goblet cells and for the lumen of the crypt. How many of you have an annotation and there is some other annotation on that annotation? Those of you who do not have that, let's simplify things. You're going to get the brush tool. You're going to make an annotation. You're going to right click on it and lock it. And then you can create another annotation on the top of that. And maybe another one. Okay. So just to make my screen a little bit cleaner, I'm going to use my selection tool to get all of that and get rid of it. And now I have a few annotations here. And I wanted to point your attention to the hierarchy. Tab. The hierarchy talks about the relationships between objects. And at the moment, that hierarchy is completely flat. Those objects do not belong to each other and so on. But if I go to objects, annotations, resolve hierarchy, I can um, I can find that the hierarchy was resolved and some of my objects are now um, within that epithelium annotation. Can you do that one more time? Sure. A little bit better. So you create an annotation. Oops, no, the selection tool. I have an annotation. You lock it. You create another annotation. And then you go to view. Sorry, objects, annotations, resolve hierarchy. And Cupid will find the relationship between those objects. Okay, so annotations can have names, but they can also be classes. You can add class to an annotation. So we can add, add classes to the list by clicking right click on here and add or remove class. Let's add class epithelium. Now we can select our epithelium up, uh, uh, annotation and set class. So now, now we have an annotation that's called epithelium that belongs to a class mm -hmm. epithelium. And I can add a class called crypts. Get rid of these little things. <laughs> So I can select my annotations from the list. I was holding my shift key to do that quickly. And I will set class to crypts. I will now ask you to click on the show annotation measurements. And we're going to celebrate our first measurement. And I will take a round and help you. Okay. 
So with annotations, um, the way how they are resolved depends on whether their boundary is inside the parent annotation. Okay. So if it's if it's outside, then it's not within the parent object. In that measurement table, you can double click on one of the objects and it's actually gonna focus your viewer on this. So you can also sort. I want to find the smallest annotation that I've made. I'm gonna scroll to the smallest one, double click that, that's my tiniest one. We also see what is the parent and what is the um, the child. So the parent of this annotation is epithelium and the parent of this particular one is the image because apparently its boundary goes beyond the, uh, the annotation of the parent. Any ideas why this might be useful for you? How you would use that as a tool in your workshop? For example, you may want to have a, a region that belongs to the tumor and a region that belongs to the stroma. Yeah. And then you want to calculate how many positive cells are in both of those regions. How many of you got to the point where you have an annotation table with some measurements? Right. We will revisit that because the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, measure some lengths. So gap thickening is all often associated with inflammatory phenotypes. In the products tab, I want you to right click on, uh, I want you to save the image first. Right click on it and duplicate. This time without data files, so you don't have to clean up those annotations. When you duplicate the image, are you, if it's an multi gigabyte image, are you literally duplicating all of those pixels? Or Absolutely not. Okay. No. So what are you duplicating then in that, in that duplication? I will show you in a moment. So you go to pro open directory project data, you're duplicating those entries. And those entries right now weigh hmm, 54 kilobytes for this one. Okay. You know, it, it can be hundreds of megabytes depending on how much data you have. But this is this is like one of the, this, it, it, it's hard to rank my biggest, um, surprises about about Cupid, but like when I when I saw this, I was like, wow, this is super smart. Because in other software packages, um, not to name one of the companies from Germany whose microscopes we have a lot of, um, if you make annotations, you are saving a copy of that image with all of the pixels and it takes forever. Okay. So I have my um, my image right here that was duplicated. It doesn't have any annotations. I'm going to grab a line tool. It can be an arrow. That's no problem. And I'm just going to create, without using selection mode, a couple of annotations across the length of the gaps. And then when I hit save, I'm only saving like the annotations. I'm not affecting the original pixels either, right? You you never affect the original pixels for interacting with Cuba. OK. So just to practice this, I'm going to add a new class that I will call gut. And I'm going to select all of my annotations. And I'm going to set my class to gut. So I can better keep track of that later. Click on my annotation measurement table. If I like to hide the thumbnails, I can. If I don't care about the objects ID, I don't have to show them. Copy the clipboard or save to CSV file, then open in your favorite spreadsheet tool to further analyze the data.
you can also learn the one thing that's going to change your 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 life. Uh, if I wasn't in a Mac, I, I I knew this is by heart. Command and L, or Control and L, Control and L, or Command and letter L. Okay. This opens commands list. I will search for annotations. And those are all commands related to annotations. I remember that this command was something I was showing annotation measurements, and I can go here or I can focus on measurements and I get this list. You'd get those points. There are some options built into Qpad, but let's not um, spend too much time on it. Question to you, my dear listeners. Um, how many measurements do you have to take in order to get an accurate average looking at this data? Five is enough, you think? That's a lot. <laughs> Good one. Do you think the orientation of this tissue is consistent? I think it's pretty good, to be honest. Um, it's not the best, but I've seen a lot worse. Um, how you would ensure that you're selecting areas for measurement that give you that consistency? Well, it's kind of hard to do, but if you know a little bit about the anatomy, you know that there should be two layers of muscle, right? So you can select areas in which both of those areas are visible or where crypts are cross-sectioned in that nice way and not in that awkward way. A big question is, is that disease process patchy or it's very uniform? If it's very uniform and the whole organ looks very badly wounded, right? Then it prob you probably don't need as many. But if the disease is patchy, then you know, there is a region where the inflammation is really horrible, and there is a, a region where the inflammation is just bad. Um, we already told you this is a small crop, right? Um, so, in fact, um, this is this is the whole Swiss roll. That's how it looks like. So, Remember our game to find that little piece of tissue sample? And I always get triggered when people ask me to show them a representative image because I don't know what it means. I mean, a representative of what kind of measurement, right? So um, this is something that we're gonna get back to. Um, and now I'm gonna spend a little bit of time showing you how to manually count. And then you're gonna forget about it promptly and learn how to do it in an automated way. Um, but the point selection tool can still be useful. How many of you have a need to report the data back as in per field of view of a standardized microscope? That next exercise is for you. We're going to specify annotation. You can use command list to find specify annotation. And um, if you like, we, we should actually switch to this um, file called ka67-1. So you can just drag and drop it in the same folder, into the same project. That's fine. So I'm just going to find my files. AI 67 LAN, the big one, the 159 megabytes one. Drag and drop. I happen to know that this is an age that image. I do want to save my changes. Okay, so now we can zoom in a little bit. We can go to objects, annotations, specify annotation. We're going to get an ellipse with a width and height 
of 500 microns. We will use microns. And then we click add. Objects, annotations, specify annotation. So my um, help here tells me that a circle of 500 by 500 corresponds to a field of view of a 40x objective with an eyepiece with a field number 20. And this is my problem with field of view because there might be a different field number on the eyepiece of a given microscope. Um, so it's, it's not super standardized measurement, um, but you can calculate it by dividing magnification by the field number. So for this, I'm actually going to want to not have my annotation filled. And then I can lock it to make sure that I don't move it accidentally. I'm going to double click on it, lock it. Then I can go to my points tools right here, points. I'll now switch to the different um, view in a, in a minute. And I'm going to add a new annotations for points. I'm going to click away on the positive cells. I can make that point size bigger so I can see it better. I'm going to click away. And in the meantime, I'm going to change things here. Going to work a little bit better for this image. Okay, so if you made a mistake and you click in the wrong area, you can move that point over. Mistake, move that over. You may want to do this. I can press this to fill or make it more empty for the annotation points. So this is tedious process. We will automate it. We have 21 annotation points. I would really have to click away for a little bit longer to count, to, to count all of them. And then, you know, when you're doing something like this, you really have to address the question, what do you do with cells that are on the border? Remember that in QPath, when there is a tool that's handy, you're probably going to find it right next to the place where it would be handy to have it. I, I want to add a new annotation, and I want to call it artifacts, because I don't want to count um, um, count these as positive, those are actually artifacts. You can delete the points! <laughs> please, please. How? Do you know how to do it? I don't. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, you can delete a point by holding down the Alt key or Option on the Mac and then clicking on it. Of course. Um, so it's the same idea as that's how you delete with the brush and the wand tool. It's the same shortcut key. One thing that one thing that might be slightly surprising, so I don't know if it should be the case, if you do, if you click on a point that isn't selected at all, with the Alt key pressed, it won't delete it immediately. It will first select it. Um, just to try and avoid you accidentally deleting a point just because you clicked somewhere. Um, so if the points are selected, Alt will remove. If they're not selected, first it will select them to give you a second second chance. And if you click again, it will delete the point. So yeah. So it's, it's also a lot of fun for us to do those events because we learn a lot as well, uh, every single time. 